in 1898. I don't remember the exact date, but I believe it was in, 19, in uh, 1898. This transformer was to transmit power to the Earth without using any wires. After the transmitting transformer had been built, we then built three other transformers to receive the power which would be sent from this big transformer. The first one was located about 10 miles away in the bush. The second transformer was located at Lake St. John near Dave Year. And the third transformer was built later on at Tatusac, which is on the River St. Lawrence. For the purpose of making any required adjustments, Tesla first used a nearby transformer, which was about 10 miles from the transmitter. Power was then sent to this 10 mile away transformer, and the power sent was considerable and convinced Major Sanford that the idea was practical. After proving to Major Sanford that his wireless power idea was workable, Tesla then turned his attention to some new things. First thing was radar and the war presenting idea. The radar was in fact a part of this war preventer, it was the guide. TV was demonstrated, and a voice operated typewriter, and other things which I will mention later on. Chester had offered his idea of radar to the American government, but uh, whoever it was who investigated the idea did not think it was practical, and so it was turned down. One of the showpieces at Stanford was a gold wire aerial. This was used to receive shortwave programs. This gold wire aerial was actually constructed by the Indians. I showed them how to do it. And it was placed on top of two tall trees, which were about 65 feet apart. It was a gold-plated aerial, as I said, a cage-type aerial, which was used on the battleships of that time, with 12 wires separated in the middle by a ring, 12 inches in diameter, tapering down to each end to two inches. At Stanford, I constructed a number of shortwave receivers, which the Major presented to some friends at the local hospital at Lake Edward. Dr. Cooley was one, and he also presented one of the receivers to Joe Louis, the Indian guy, I should say the chief of the Indian guy. Chester also built the microwave receivers, which were very small indeed. One of the ideas of Chester was a metal analyzer. This was very useful in finding out what certain pieces of metal were. I first used this at Ottawa in 1969. But there a large lump, chunk of metal had been discovered on the beach near Merville, and this piece of metal weighing something like 3,000 pounds was taken to the Archie camp where they tried to find out what it was. It was a kind of a mystery, and they were not able to find out what it was at Barcarchi, and then it was shipped to Ottawa, to the National Research Council, where they also did everything possible to find out what it was, but they were not able to do that. That is to say, they could not be certain of what it was. The stories went around that it fell from the sky, and it was a part of a spaceship or something or other of that kind, but no one could say exactly what it was. And so, in 1969, I was invited to go to Ottawa 
and test this with the Kester, with the Kessler analyzer. I had, well, I still have, in fact, this invention of Kessler. Well, to shorten the story, I certainly found out what the piece of metal was using the Kessler analyzer. Another wonder was a small, portable TV machine. This TV machine could see through stone walls. In other words, like a camera, a special kind of a camera, if you pointed it at a wall and it could see anything on the other side of the wall, it recorded this on a tape of some kind and then you wind it up and you could transmit this picture which had been picked up to a stone wall and send it to a small screen. This screen at Stanford was mounted on the wall and it looked like a colored picture of some kind. I said another tape uh, oil painting TV because when it was operating it was exactly what it looked like to me because it was like a picture in a nice frame on the wall and there were no visible wires to it but Kester had a small box that it was operating on the table and as he operated this he could change these pictures that were seemingly coming from nowhere on this frame of some kind it looked like as I say it looked like a, an oil painting and I have called it a whole painting TV. He had